From the suburbs of Detroit at the legendary Comedy Castle, it's closing time with Mike Green. Tonight, Mike's special guests are Uncle Cracker and the Detroit Derby Girls. Now, here's your host, Mike Green. Hey, thanks. Uh, it's awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, man, we have a great show. But first, I want to explain to you the concept of this show. Uh, essentially, I feel like we've been slighted. I feel like as Detroiters for years, people, f people forget how cool we are. Like, uh, you know, uh, I was in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and I was getting paid. It was a Saturday night. And the club owner does this thing where he sees on my paperwork that I'm from Detroit. And he goes, uh, he said, uh, oh, Oh, you're from Detroit? And I go, yeah. And he goes, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I freaking hate that. So I got pissed and I'm like, I, 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 dude, we got, we got Fago and, and Better Maid and we got freaking, we got Coney Island. And, you don't know, we have the DIA and Lelly's and freaking Joe Louis Arena. I got pissed in the fist. We have the fist and the big ass tire. We got a tire it's, it's the size of Green Bay. And, and I got mad. So I said, look, you live in Green Bay. <laughs> and then I go like this, I go, um, and your state slogan is, come smell our derriere. <laughs> That's what I said. Because <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I'm funny when I say stuff like that. So I, uh, I got robbed, I got robbed, but it wasn't in Detroit. I got robbed in Battle Creek, Michigan, which is the serial capital of the world, which is not, not impressive. It's embarrassing. So. I have a friend who lives on 8 Mile, and I'm like, dude, I got robbed. And he's like, where, down here? And I'm trying to make it cool. So I'm like, no, the uh, friggin' serial capital of the world. <laughs> and he's like, what did you say when he was running away? Were you like, oh, he's after me lucky charms. <laughs> <laughs> I love being from here. I genuinely do, and uh, it's my favorite thing. I have my, my beautiful wife and my three kids. And this is funny. So I think that uh, I, I start, you know, I was on the cover of Our Magazine. I won a couple awards, Las Vegas and New York Comedy Festivals. And I, you know, that's a, I'm not, oh yeah, that's what I was doing. I was pandering right there. Thank you for letting me pander. I, uh, no, it's so, it, so just when I started feeling like a, a big shot, uh, I picked her up at work. She works at Sunglass Hut. So I, I, I pick her up and we go to eat downtown Royal Oak. Now, I had just done five shows in town here. So I'm, I'm thinking, oh, you know, uh, somebody's going to recognize me in my head. I'm so arrogant. I, I, I'm getting a big head. And so I get out and, and from behind me, I hear, oh, honey, look who it is. So I'm like, oh, here we go. You know, and, uh, and they go, it's a girl who sold us our sunglasses. <laughs> so I was, so I was, uh, one last thing. I read this today and, and it kind of made me laugh. Um, there was a, there's a meth lab. It got broken up. Six trailers, six trailers all connected together in a, a trailer park. They, they tore into it and, and they found a, somehow a cat meow mix bag full of meth. A whole meow mix bag full of it. Which explained why all the cats had no teeth and were buying Sudafed. <laughs> like, here's the funny part. You know where it was? Green Bay. That's it. Good. So uh, we, we have a really awesome show tonight. We're super, super excited. We spent some time with the uh, Detroit Derby Girls. Yeah. And in a little while, uh, Uncle Cracker. So stick around. We'll be right back. An unfamiliar town, city, or stage? Don't panic. Now with Accent and App, you'll know exactly where you are by the dialects you hear. In the 500 feet, you'll be making the right on the Joseph Compol. Coming up in the quarter of a mile, you'll be making a right at Pierogi Stand. Then, go straight ahead to where you'll be going. Now with Accent and Ave, you'll always know where you are and where you don't belong. Accent and Ave, the next step in GPS and safety. Detroit City. Welcome back to Closing Time. I love this. This is a great joke that I wrote, and now we put it to video. Take a look at the books on CD bit. Lately, I've been traveling a lot, so I've been getting books on CD. That's how I pass the time. Real recently, I was downtown Detroit, and the book I wanted on CD was 40 bucks. I'm not spending 40 bucks to have somebody read me a book that's dumb. The same book in paperback was $4. I thought, man, I'm just being lazy. So I buy the paperback and I'm driving downtown Detroit and I see one of those guys holding the sign that said it will work for food, right? So I start thinking, 
I'll buy him a couple Big Macs, put him in the back seat, and have him read me the book. That sounds good in theory, but six hours later, he's still on Ch -ch -ch chapter two. It turns out the homeless are not good readers. In an unfamiliar town, city, or state? Don't panic. Now with Accent and Amp, you'll know exactly where you are by the dialects you hear. At Nine Mile, turn right, but slow down. You might get rear ended. Drive it straight into the V, then lickety split, you'll be at the Home Depot. Those are my two favorite places. Now with Accent and Ave, you'll always know where you are and where you don't belong. Accent and Ave, the next step in GPS and safety. We uh, spent some time at the Dream Cruise. It was a lot of fun. Take a look. <laughs> Yeah, hot yeah. girl in it. See that? <laughs> give her a, <laughs> give her a little dream cruise. <laughs> Is that what you call it? Give, give her, her a, give her a ride without a car. <laughs> What's the first car you, oh, oh, oh. you uh, slept with the girl in? Man, that's a that's that's a tough call. I never had sex in a car. Never? No. What's the first car you ever did it in? Yes. Yes, you can. Just say what kind of car it was. It was a Ford truck. So you have done it in a car. All right, good. I'm glad we got that out of the way. 68 dudes on the corner. Really? How old were you? Probably about 18. Shut the front door. <laughs> All right, good job. In the back? <laughs> oh, in the front. <laughs> All right, good. Must have been an extended cab. <laughs> At least you hope so. <laughs> now you'd have probably married him if that was the case. All right, good. <laughs> A Dodge Duster. What? Yeah. Was it, it had to be the I big one because no, you couldn't have was, fit. It was, <laughs> you don't know. A Lincoln Continental. A oh, he's a rich guy. At least he's a rich guy. Good, good. You know, some people get a little horny and crazy with it, but they get what? Horny? Horny. Oh, I think you said horny. No, 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 not horny. Crazy. Like, well, that's, horny. You have to horny get the gas crazy. cap off for that. This is your lovely wife or girlfriend? Uh, this is my regular friend. Oh, friend? Yeah. Oh, friend. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we were wondering if you could maybe get on the hood of the car and no. do something cool like Tawny Katane, something cool. How about you? Were you? I no. could. Yeah, get on it. No. Like, get all sexy. Come on. No. Okay. Can I? Can I get on it? No. Not unless you want to buy it. Is this your girlfriend? Yes. Sexy. You do it. Come on. Get on the car. Will you let her? No. You won't let her get on the hood? No. What is with you car guys? Dude, it'll be hot. <laughs> what I got's longer than woodwork. <laughs> Just lean up against it and get all hot looking like 80s, like Tawny Katane. Kind of All right. How about you? Will you? You, can you do it at 46. That has nothing to do with it. Do it. Yeah, no better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me do it, too. I'm going to do it, too. We'll both do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Smack your ass. Do it. Smack your ass. Yeah. <laughs> You guys, right after this commercial break, we have a special guest. Uncle Cracker's here. Detroit City. Hey, you guys. Welcome back to Closing Time. I'm Mike Green. You guys, I'm super excited about our next guest. He's sold over 7 million albums. He's one of my favorite rockers of all time. Please welcome Uncle Cracker. May I sit? Sit, please. Sit, please. So, uh, I've been sitting all day. I'll bet. I'll bet waiting for this. Yes. All right, good. Uh, <laughs> thanks, man. Th thank you so much first for coming because, uh, you know, I'm a huge fan of yours. And, and it's crazy. And I love, my big, my big thing that I love most about you is how, the way you support Detroit. I mean, you and... Uh, and, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're, no, no, you know, it's a big deal. So, uh, so let's get to, I guess everybody probably asked you this, but um, the name Uncle Cracker, where did it come from? Well, growing up, my, my, my nickname was always Cracker. Right. And uh, when it, when... Now, if I say it, do I have to call you crack uh? <laughs> or, can, or can I say Cracker? Nowadays, probably do. Everybody gets, everybody gets so sensitive nowadays. Yeah, there's a lot of that. But, uh, but Cracker was always a nickname growing up, and when I got a record deal... There was already a band called Cracker. Right. So, and they were a little sensitive about me wanting to use that name too. So, did you get sued? Are you kidding me? Are you <laughs> kidding me? I'm like an ATM machine. 
<laughs> because this show, really, it, we do want to try to focus on local stuff. So um, you own a bar, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah somewhere. You own a bar. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I do. You, you do. I, I do, I do. Uh, somewhere. And uh, where's it at? Where's it's, it in, at? Uh, it's in Clinton Township. Clinton Township. Yeah, and the called, name of it is? It's called Mugshots. Mugshots. Mm -hmm. All right, so, you know, yeah. so that's uh, a cool thing. And, um, and do you ever sing? This I wonder. Like, I pictured this today. I was like, do you ever, like, sneak it? Because I wonder if rock stars do this. Do you ever, go, like, go into uh, your, your bar and, like, with a hoodie and sunglasses and, like, sing karaoke and, like, put your name in for your own song or something? No. no. Dude, I would totally do that. And people would be, you could win contests and shit. Make some extra scratch. <laughs> With some extra scratch. I know. <laughs> Can you tell I make 37 well, bucks about, a week, it's dude? It's not about the money. It's about the money. Exactly. Right. That's exactly right. My favorite lyric ever in any song ever in the history of the world is this. Um, you could take Grash at South, but that's a real rough route. You get found face down with your pockets hanging out. <laughs> Which is uh, a great song. It's an amazing song. I'm a huge fan of it. Thank you. When you're... Dude, when you're writing stuff, does it ever occur to you that you go, oh my God, I'm a genius. Like, does that ever happen? <laughs> Every day. I'll bet, yeah. Every day. I, no, and, and I don't know if a lot of people I'm just know kidding. This. I don't, no, no, you should. No, you I should. Don't, I don't toot my, I don't like to toot my own horn, but. I'll toot, toot it, but later, later I'll toot it. <laughs> kidding. All right, good. All right, so. Um, I like to toot. You're super, you're super, super funny, and I don't know if you realize that. Like, uh, we, uh, we were at a, a wedding together, mutual, uh, for his cousin, my best friend, uh, at a wedding. And so, uh, I guess you met my wife, and you come over and you go, uh, Green, is that your wife? And I go, yeah. And you go, man, you out kicked your coverage and walked away. <laughs> you know where I stole that from? No. Larry the Cable Guy. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he played down at the down Dan at the Whitney, I know who he is. Yeah, yeah. good guy. Yeah. Love him. Danny's great. And uh, so I go down, and I bring my wife with me, and I walk in, and he goes, Hey, y'all kicked your coverage on that one. <laughs> so now, and then, and it hurt me. And I was like, really? <laughs> like, my wife's beautiful. Why do you think her. I mentioned it? I'm still talking about it. I love it. her, but it was great, and I'm just like, See, it gets you, doesn't it? I know, I know. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts. So, okay, it hurts. so you, uh, so, and you have a, uh, like a history of these funny songs. Like, do you know that? Do you know, I mean, do you, when, you, when you sit down and write funny songs, do you kind of, like, um, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, I hate California. Yeah. That's a funny ass song. When you say, you hope your ex-girlfriend meets uh, Phil Spector. Yeah. <laughs> nobody funny. liked that, though. They didn't make that. Nobody got well, that. We can't play that out here. Like, no, people, they were so, Really? People are so sensitive. These days. Oh, I know. Like, Trust know. me, I do this. I know. Like, can't we all just get along? Like, why, why does it got to be like, why do we got to watch what we say? Your spectrum, like the music that you've done over the years has been so diverse. It's very eclectic. I think that's what my wife called it. She knows the big words. I don't. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you, you went from that song I talked about, the, the, the uh, uh, heaven, Heaven, is it called? Yes, yes, yes. All the way to, to like, smile. I mean, there's such a huge diversity there. Like, what... How does it happen? Like, explain to me why, why that happens. Um, you I get think bored? You just, I mean, I don't yeah, know, I mean, absolutely. Legit, you get but. bored and you get older. Things change. You know, sure. uh, uh, I'm, well, well, I want to I wanna believe I'm, I'm more mature than I, than I was. Well, and, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I guess things progress, you know, things do, you know, things change. If not, they just get, they're just, they just, they just get stagnant and they die and, I don't know, you like to mix it up just to make sure you're having fun. Because if I'm not having fun, nobody's having fun. Right, exactly. So things just, they just go that way. And I just found myself on a spot where I was like, I want to do something that makes me feel good. You know what I mean? And, right. And, uh, and, you know, you make records and you make records. Like, they actually, are, they are. You they, still call them records. I'm like, I, I show my kid vinyl. And they're like, what is that, dude? <laughs> feel so bad for my kids, man. They just never know the feeling of saving up your money and walking into a record store. Going to Peaches? Did you go to Peaches? You're a little older than I am. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking yeah, yeah. I'm more I'm Harmony House. Harmony, Harmony House. House. All right, there you go. All right, good. So, but, I'm, but I'm thinking they'll never, know the, they'll never know the experience of, you know, saving up your money to go buy your favorite record. In the bin, you know right, what I mean? Yeah. Like, Would you that flip was, them? The yeah, experience awesome, was all man. of it. The, the right. mystery, the mystique, and all that's gone. It there is, is no, there is. is no mystery. Is history like it? Thank you, iTunes. 
No. <laughs> yeah, they'll sponsor the show. All right, good. So, uh, you, were, you wrote Ball with the Ball with him, right? Co-wrote. Co-wrote. Yeah, yeah. So who came up with Ball with the Ball? Um, At what point were you like, you know what would go nobody, good here? Neither one of us. We got sued for that one. You did? Yeah. <laughs> I told you I'm an ATM machine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, Ball with the Ball was, you know, back then we were making a rap record and it was fun and we were sampling, you know, records like everybody else does, right. not knowing what happens when you, when, when somebody actually steps up. And, but Ball with the Ball was like an old Sugar Hill gang thing, like Ball with the Ball. That's oh, was it? Up, right? It's like one of them, like, yeah, it's like one of the things that slipped by, but it was just cool. It was just, it was just rhythmic, you know. It was just something fun. It was and, awesome. But it ended up, but he made it sound, but Kid Rock made it sound like vicious. Yeah. Like, when that concert starts, but yeah. Absolutely. So, awesome. Uh, thank you so much. Before, before you go though, uh, we we here at, uh, ah! we here at, yeah, I bet you never heard that. Uh, we here at closing time with Mike Green. You know, we we thought, what could we do? And and you know, you're such a great ambassador to Detroit. But uh, we would like to present you with an award for being an ambassador to Detroit, if you don't mind. Uh, no, no problem, no problem. So if we could, uh, oh, look. Oh, oh my see, goodness. look, yeah, see, I'm not playing. No. I don't play around. Oh, look at that. Thank you. Oh, and, uh, oh here's your, you got to write your name on, you got to write your name on this certificate, because I forgot. It, it, but, uh, you guys pulled out fancy. all the stops on this one. We spared no expense. You guys... Uncle Cracker. Thank you. Thanks so much. Awesome. Detroit City. Welcome back to closing time. We uh, we spent some time downtown at the, the Masonic Temple with the Detroit Derby Girls. We had a blast. Take a look at this video. So I'm here with uh, Lauren Uhalik, yes. and Lauren, um, actually I know you because you're also a comedian, right? Yes, yes. yes. Which, uh, that's how we yeah. met. And, uh, and she told me all about this great scene, and so I thought we'd come out and check it out. The Detroit Derby Girls have been around. We've been around since 2005. We made our home the Detroit Masonic Temple, which is such a cool building. Right, so I don't think we've mentioned that yet, but yeah. yeah, we're at the Masonic, and it's insane. It's beautiful and like old and cool and cool yeah. architecture. There's all kinds of stuff hidden in here, including the Derby Girls. Right, and um, so how long have you been a Derby Girl? I've been with the League since the beginning of 2011. It's a really long process to get involved. I got drafted last year, and I'm going in the beginning of my second season this year. It's exciting. I mean, we've got a national level travel team. We've got five home teams that play here um, during the winter season and then during the summer our national travel team actually plays. Okay cool and I think I said Lauren Uhalik but I didn't say your derby girl name which is? Wham Tramick. Wham Tramick and Wham that's because you're from? Ham Tramick. Right of course because that's creative. From, from the mean streets. I'm Ghetto Barbie. My name is Kareen the Dream. If I push the middle of your back does your hair grow? Yeah. Remember Barbie? Well, I'm ghetto Barbie. Mine doesn't work, so. <laughs> awesome. Tell us your names. Lindsay Blohan, Freakin' C. Freakin' C and Lindsay Blohan. These are my two favorite names so far. Um, we have a bitch rider from Mitch Rider. Um, um, we have a test tackles who wanted to be test. Got it. Got yeah. it. The home team that I'm on is called the Detroit Pissed Offs. We're like the Pistons, but we're pissed off. I love that. So I could make my, like my name could be like Brad. <laughs> Yeah, but because I'm not good looking. You like want to keep but. it PC because it's family friendly. So oh. PG-13. You ever get drunk and do this? No, uh, in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody keep, keeps telling me you are scrap metal. What does that mean? Scrap metal actually is someone who's not on a team. I'm yet to be drafted. Are they called meets or matches or games oh, contests? I Bouts. Oh, that sounds good. What uh, position do you play? Oh gosh, what position? Jammer blocker, anything they want Anything. To do. She wants anything. anything. She'll, if anybody's play. hiring for a derby yes, girl, you could call Kareen the Dream. Yes. <laughs> what do you do when you're a blocker? Uh, you use your hips and your bootay and your arms, but you got to keep your arms in. Show me what you can't do. Show me. Do it on me. Do what you can't do. Like, this would not be legal. No, that would this not. This would not be legal. No. This would not be legal. I like that one. So you can hit with this part, but you have to keep your arms in. Do the booty part again. You like the booty part? 
Yeah, it's like, like doing that. the bump in the 70s. <laughs> That's awesome. Can you shoot the duck? Did you ever shoot the duck? I used to be able to, but I can't do it anymore. I fall over. I mean, I'll try it, but I'll fall well, for give sure. Give us a try. Okay. Oh, she shot the duck. Would you mind um, skating with me? Sure. Maybe to end this segment? Oh, absolutely. I we can skate together. Nice. In an unfamiliar town, city, or stage? Don't panic. Now with Accent and Amp, you'll know exactly where you are by the dialects you hear. Take a right on Joy Road. That's right. And you Americans are joyless because you do not know the love of Allah. And now, take a right on Michigan Avenue, you white devil. Then pass the 300 strip joints. Haram. And you'll be at your destination. La, 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 la. Hey, my man. Can you hear me? Your door is locked. When you see Church's Chicken, make a left. Because you're going to be on MLK Boulevard. And you know you can't just drive around here. Now with Accent and Ave, you'll always know where you are and where you don't belong. Accent and Ave, the next step in GPS and safety. I want to thank our special guests, the Detroit Derby Girls and Uncle Cracker. It's closing time.